this uh, per capita, I think we have more opera companies than anywhere in the United States, which is a pretty amazing statement. We're not trying to be flashy. We're not trying to be shocking. We're just trying to, to create something new and original. One of the great thing about being a conductor is you enter and you turn your back and you just see the orchestra and the musicians and the singers on stage. Gesualdo was the, the most contemporary composer of his time and I think he still is. When you look at his music, people, if you, took, if you erased his name and you did it in an exam in a music class, many would think that he's a contemporary composer. He, he was, um, well, he became ill and, you know, was crazy at the end of his life and really pushed the boundaries of harmonic language to a you know, to things that were not acceptable at the time, for sure. But that made, I think, had a great influence on what came after when you talk about lineage. He was a great influence on, on the harmonic language of the Baroque and of the contemporary up to now. So I thought it would be really interesting because he, he was so contemporary and so avant-garde to use him as a, as a, as a subject matter for, and also his life is, is perfect. You killed you kill your wife, you get poisoned, you know, all these things. It's a great story for, for an opera. I was leaving behind a little bit the idea of all these other collaborative um, pieces with dancers and other things, and that I was really tr starting to focus on opera. A friend of mine said, well, what would you really want to do with Ensemble Parallel? And I said, opera. And then we thought, well, why is it not opera parallel? And I thought, well, that's right. That, why isn't it? And I felt I had the support now that we could really do that. I also realized that it was um, something that wasn't being done in San Francisco, that we were actually really filling a niche that no other organization was doing as opposed to contemporary collaborative form. Other many, we have we're very blessed in San Francisco with a huge amount of organizations that do new music and do it very well. So I thought, well, this is going to be our specialty. You create a, a conceptual idea for setting the opera. Um, and you spearhead and work with the, the other designers to create an overall vision that is the final product of the, of the opera. I was very inspired to work with him because in a way the way he looked at the piece is very similar to the way I look at a score. It was very into the larger concept of the piece and then going into the detail. One of our mandates is to try and um, do interdisciplinary work and there are so many great dancers and you know, f uh, physical theater actors and choirs that we've worked with, um, all sorts of great video artists, that it's a great place to collect and, and collaborate with great artists. I had had a model when I was a student being at the University of Montréal that they have a professional new music ensemble there and, it, and as a student I had really benefited from being around this professional resident ensemble and as an advanced player and as, an, as a conductor I'd been able to work with them and it had really helped my growth. And I thought that one of, one of my dreams was also to at one point have a professional resident ensemble in a good inst music institution so that it would be an inspiration for the students in that institution just like I had for me. Parallel Opera Lab is basically a laboratory, you know, that allows us to germinate ideas technically and, um, you know, work with different artists, um, designers, video artists on any given project to sort of further further the way we tell stories to, and so to improve our ability to tell stories on stage. So that was also, it was part of that new idea of the Opera Lab, which we're really excited about. I wanted to investigate that, that aspect of Renaissance and new, new work. And so that's why we, the piece is the story of Gesualdo, which is, was a Renaissance composer. But then there are the young people who really aren't as interested in seeing traditional opera and like that technology we were just talking about. They like the integrated video quality, the, uh, what feels like you're 
not necessarily watching a film, but something that is as engaging as a film, right? It's very different than film, but it, it has that kind of storytelling quality to it where every little detail, which is what we work towards, is really integrated and, and helps capture the imagination, draw you in. That was part of the Opera Lab to sort of investigate how we could use these, uh, these colors, these col Renaissance colors into the language of today. So one of the great things about a great story and about opera and about theater combined with contemporary music is that it in fact allows people to let go and be entertained and absorb the music as opposed to just putting on a pair of headphones and listening to really intense contemporary music. It can be really overwhelming. That's what's great about art, you know. Sometimes I worry if everyone loves it, I wonder, was it really good? Because you have to, you know, really great art probably has to have both, right? Some people really do not like it and some people like it. So I'm always concerned about that at times. But Opera Carlo is used to sort of throwing something out there that's a little risky. I mean, I don't think we've ever done one project that couldn't have been uh, you know, disliked by someone or torn apart. I mean, you, you, you have, you, that's the whole point of what we're trying to do. But, um, you know, I think you never take this for granted. You always work very hard on making sure that the next production is your best production, if you can.